Last item and last of the series, we're going to talk about the core functions and essential services. So basically assessment. Basically, it sounds like it means collect, analyze, and make available information. Policy development, this is about making laws and setting policies. And then assurance, making sure that people get the services th to those who in need it, but also making sure that a law is being followed and working with law enforcement to make sure things are actually getting done. And so when we look at this, and this is the 10 essential public health services, you start with assessment, which is monitor health and diagnose and investigate. Policy development, which is informed to develop policies. And then assurances, where you enforce laws, you link, and you evaluate. So I'm going to try to give you a real, real quick a little example here so that you could wrap your heads around how all of this could work. Let's start with one, a chronic disease. And um, we're going to start off with, we see that people are getting lung cancer, and we see that they're at their, oh, Let's even get a better one, e-vaping. This happened more recently. You start seeing that in the hospitals, in urgent care, people are coming in with damaged lungs and, and, they're, and they're having almost like they've burnt their lungs. And, and so people are going, why is this occurring? And then when they investigate it, public health people begin to investigate it, they started to realize that there was something in uh, the e-vaping and that was actually burning the lungs. And so what they started to do is they started to inform and educate and empower people to be to realize that e-vaping and this particular uh, chemical that was in the uh, e-vaping um, items was a actually doing damage. And, it, and they partnered with community members. They developed policies. For example, they were discovering that um, in the e-vaping, um, they were finding that, that significantly younger individuals were e-vaping compared to others, and they were seeing that, uh, that Jules, for example, was targeting teenagers and young adults specifically, and so they started to develop policies to really stop and inhibit um, the targeting of, of young adults and teenagers. So where does law enforcement come in? They develop these policies, and what I mean by laws, they started to say, hey, if you're selling to someone who's under 18, we're gonna, we're gonna fine you, and we're gonna take some things away from you. And then we're gonna evaluate to see if this made an impact, and if young adults are now smoking less. Well, but let's say someone gets fined, or someone gets, uh, they find that someone, is selling to young adults, they're going to really work to make sure that people are aware of this and they're going to link them to care or maybe they're going to get them into sensation classes. Uh, an individual, a young adult, maybe is maybe addicted to, to smoking and really making sure that they start to get people off of smoking too. So this is where you start to see assessment to policy development to assurance. This is constantly a moving um, in movement in a sense that they're constantly researching, they're constantly changing policies, and constantly looking to make sure if they're working. And in public health, you can see things changing. Sometimes we will learn new things about a disease, and we'll have to change what we're saying. It's not that we didn't know what we were doing before, it's just that it's constantly a moving target about who's getting impacted and how they're getting impacted. That is how public health works. And so when we look at the core functions of government, think about this. Assessment at the federal level, they might have tobacco health surveillance. The policy de development might be the a ban on um, smoking at the um, flights because that is federal level. That means it goes across all the United States. And insurance might be these federal grants to do anti-smoking research. Or, better yet, if you smoke on a flight, you will get in trouble um, big time. All right? At the state level, um, the state might monitor tobacco use. They might have tobacco taxes. And then what they might do is they might fund a campaign through Proposition 99 to put money back into 
um, to statewide initiatives. And then locally, I can talk to about, about this from the local level, because I was involved in this, is that you start to actually look to see who is um, actually following tobacco use ordinances and really working to prohibit smoking in bars and would actually would find bars, would go in and, and issue fines to bars that were not in compliance. And then really trying to get uh, resources out to people that are, um, that are smoking and trying to help people to stop smoking. So which of the following is not a core function of public health? Assurance, assessment, authority, or policy development? And the answer is authority. Yeah, we do work to do assurance and assessment and policy development, but we are not the people that police. We partner with law enforcement to do the policing. The essential health services of monitoring health and diagnosing and investigating disease relate to which core public health function? Assurance, assessment, or policy development? Now let's see which one, which one do you think it is? The answer is assessment. When we investigate and we diagnose, that is considered assessment. All right, moving on to the next one, the last uh, one, the very last one is looking at stakeholders and roles in public health. And so key is when we work with public health, we cannot be the sole lone rangers and we have to work with our community, the clinical care system, employers, businesses, the media, academia, or the research arm, and government and public infrastructure. And so when we talk about non-governmental organizations, these are government or uh, organizations like um, professional membership, like the American Public Health Association, um, associations related to a public health concern like the American Cancer Society, maybe an organization of citizens like the Americans for Non-Smoker Rights, or foundations like the Bill and Min Melinda Gates Foundation. These are all considered non-government agencies. When we talk about um, public health, we start looking at individual patient focus, personal services, diagnostic treatments, laboratories, clinical services. These are all considered health care agencies. And then other partners in public health range from media to academia. And these kind of give you a list of employers and businesses and government agencies and academia. And in class, I'm going to have a cahoot um, to challenge you to see if you know the different public health partners. And so um, I'm going to put a little uh, different slides in there to see if you can recognize how these different public health partners play together. Government agencies are like your health departments, all right? Academia is, is just like it sounds. It's academics, like university systems, like University John Hopkins University. So let's see if you guys can figure this out. Vehicle for public dis discourse. So who do you think would be in charge of really getting information out to people where they could really talk about it and discuss it? Media. Health and all policies. So making sure that um, laws uh, have, uh, have health in them. Who do you think is in charge of that? Government. Education and training. Who do you think is in charge of really educating and training and getting research and information out to people and a way to really train people and make sure that they are educated? Academia. That would be your university systems, your community colleges. And then last but not least, wellness, wellness initiatives and benefits or employers and, business, and businesses. Each play a very key role. All right, that moves into my last one, determining and influencing the public health. When we talk about public health, and this is something I'm gonna go into more detail, are there's something called health determinants. You have your genes and biology, you have your individual health behaviors, you have your social characteristics, like who you interact with, and then you have your health services or medical care. 
What's really interesting though, your genes and biology impact some of your health. Your health behaviors definitely impact part of your health. Your medical care system definitely does this. But what impacts your most of your health is where you live. Where you live and and your your ecosystem, okay? That is where the majority of your health is impacted. And I think that's key in public health because we can focus in on health behaviors. We could focus in on the medical care system. But what happens about where, where you live? What happens where your neighborhood and what happens if your neighborhood and where you live impact the most and yet that is the most unhealthy place to live and work and play. And, and so in public health, we're really starting to look at the social determinants of health more. So if we look at the health impact pyramid, the social factors are key, your social determinants of health. And the more we can influence that with policies, the better people are with their decision making and, and being able to do preventative health, health medical care, and counseling and education. So individual eff efforts are on these three areas, right? And societal efforts, our policies really impact the social economic factors. And so think about this. This is how we work on this from in public health. We look at poverty reduction and education. That is a big picture item. We put seatbelt laws and we do smoking restrictions. Big picture item. We put vaccinations and col uh, cholesterol screenings in there. We work with the medical care system to do treatment of diseases. And then we really work on the individual level to help people stop doing a behavior that might, um, might really cause them harm. And then we try to also do what we call uh, preventative measures that where there are healthy choices they could do. And this is called the health impact pyramid. So let's t talk about the four determinants of health. Can you list all four of them? And I talked about them before, so I'm gonna move back to that slide to see if you can think of them. Right now, in your mind, list the four determinants of health. Here I'm moving back to that slide. Genes and biology, your health behaviors, medical care, and your social, uh, social and ecological, right? Genes and behavior, one. Health behaviors, two. Social and social, uh, social uh, societal characteristics. And then health behavior services or medical care. And which one influences our health the most? Bing, 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 societal characteristics, the, where you live, work, and play, right? What impacts it the least? Your genes and biology. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in class, but the reality is where you work and play really impact your overall health and well-being. Think about it. Where you work and play also impacts your health behaviors. Where you work, live, and play determines what access to medical care. So let's say you live in rural America, you might have a hard time accessing medical care or a hard time doing someplace, uh, work, uh, being someplace that has access to somewhere where you can walk safely or maybe you work in, live in an urban environment where you don't feel safe walking, all right? So think about all of these different determinants of health. Good. Genes, biology, health behaviors, societal characteristics, health services, and medical care. Okay, fill in the blanks using the following choices. As we move blank, the health impact pyramid, the public health impact grows greater. And as we move blank, the health impact of, for an individual increases. So let's go back to the slide. And so as we move down the pyramid, the public health impact increases. 
and as we move up the individual effort. So as we move down the impact pyramid, the public health impact grows, and as we move up the public impact, the amount of individual, individual effort increases. So in review, the public health core sciences are key. They help prevent. We're constantly doing surveillance. We're looking at prevention efforts. We're using epidemiology, and we're using laboratory and informatics to get information out. So in this, we talked about the purpose of public health. I talked about the key terms. We identified some real key events in history. Think back to Jon Snow and, um, and even to the Romans and Greeks and how they separated water, clean water from, um, from their sanitation. The core public health functions and services, the role of different stakeholders in the uh, public health, I'm going to be talking more about the social determinants of health, but we know that where you live, work, and play is key. And there are individual determinants of health that really affect population health. So know that how we act and what we do in our community does impact our overall health. And that is a basic overview of public health.